Hey, what's up, Ron here. Today is a painting spotlight, and I want to share with you this large skyscape painting I did with tons of clouds, a bit of ground below, and it's a special one. We'll get into it in just a second, but this is kind of a series I want to introduce as an effort to not just tell you what to do or how to paint or how to do this and that because it's very tough to do with art and it's very personal and I would encourage you to discover what works for you and everyone's a little different. So instead of telling you exactly what to do in order to paint a scene, I wanna share with you some of my mindset and the things I'm focused on as I've been working on this scene and just share with you a few picks from the process uh, and a bit of how what you can maybe consider while painting to improve your work and to enjoy it and to like it more. So without further ado, let's look at this one. So this is a large painting. I really wanted to, again, uh, get something a little more impressive out there. And I have been attracted to a lot of skies and clouds and scenes like that that have this majestic, almost angelic quality to them. Uh, one thing that I can say for sure is that I learned a lot from this process and also... I know how I'm gonna tackle it next. I'm gonna do another attempt, same size. Um, and and I think I figured out a bunch of stuff in order to do the technique a little better. Now, let me show you directly on the painting. Okay, so I had to take this one to the living room and you're gonna see Jane, our temporary foster. Uh, it just didn't fit on my table. Uh, and it's a pretty big one, but I do want to show you some of the details and discuss a bit of the process because it was very interesting. So this entire sky area, very vast, and clouds demand a bit of wet and wet, uh, which to be honest with you, I did struggle a bit with. So my initial idea for an approach was let's do whatever we can in one go, but leave some areas to be worked on section by section just due to the complexity of the subject. Now, in retrospect, what I would probably do is split work between the clouds because what I did try and do is still, I painted the sky first, right? And if I have pictures, I'll show you in the background. And then I said, okay, I'm gonna work on this cloud hopefully in one go as much as possible, but it's very hard for me right now to get all of the different details. So I had to do multiple glazes, some with pre-wetting, some with wetting the edges to make these you know, smoother transitions. But overall, um, a very challenging process, honestly. One of the parts I'm most proud of is this lower left quadrant, if you will, where I think this cloud captures the quality I was looking for alongside, forget about this little cauliflower, but this little darker transition and together with the sky, with the cityscape underneath it and all of its details, which proved to be the easiest part of this entire painting. Now, one thing I wanted to do was be completely agnostic as to how I paint, meaning the actual process. Um, so I'll use opaque paint, I'll do it again in small sections and large areas, whatever kind of happens, um, whatever gets the result I want. But you will notice again, this area that I attempted to paint together proved to be very challenging and I'll probably split that into multiple layers. This is really a, a process of exploration. Honestly, I finished this painting for a look at her. I finished this painting process with a lot of confusion and a lot of question as to how would I tackle this in a more effective way, you know? And I think a part of the learning experience is that asking yourself these questions and and trying to figure out, okay, how can I uh, paint this in a way that will lead to the result I want better than what I currently have, you know, with all of these awkward edges and stuff like that. Like this, I really like. This even, I really like that transition to gray, but still not super duper dark or super light. Uh, I like some of these gaps, but honestly, again, I'm coming out of this process with a lot more questions uh, than answers, let's say. Now we will add that there was a strong strong presence of the ugly stage with this one for sure um, and I kept thinking back to that large car that I painted and told myself just like back then I know it looks awkward but keep at it and optimize those little areas as much as you can now the point at where I quit or I marked this as done was when I decided I don't feel like going over the small areas and making corrections anymore I'm good um, 
if I do want to paint a better version, it will have to be better from the beginning, meaning a more accurate drawing, which I did not put enough effort into this one. So a more accurate drawing and a more accurate understanding of the different areas, how dark they should be, how light they should be, and then splitting my efforts again into smaller areas, because that's one of the things that caught me a little off guard. Um, so there's this, how shall I say, like a spectrum of Am I trying to paint with every layer, make connections with everything and do an underpainting and cover large areas as much as possible to the other side where I'm going to work more granularly, thinner glazes, thinner layers. And I'm trying to find a happy medium for these kinds of scenes, especially at this size. You know, the smaller it is, the more you can get in one go uh, and the larger it is, the more technique becomes a concern. And funny enough, I want to be agnostic towards technique, but that means I need to explore all sorts of different techniques in order to get it. Um, that's pretty much the biggest insight, I would say, splitting it up to smaller areas, which is kind of what I wanted to do in advance, but maybe I got caught up in the process. And I hope that all of these ramblings make sense to you. But just to show you, you know, sometimes a painting you put a lot of effort into and it's quite big and there are a lot of different variables to it, like the sky needs to be softer, the ground needs to be a little harder and more detailed maybe, that's how I pictured it. Even these paintings can get quite derailed and, and move in a different direction. One thing I'm very happy about this one is the colors, um, which is something I wanted to really work on regardless, just getting the right color for the harmony I'm looking for, because I feel like I've got a little off track with the colors I'm, I'm able to hit consistently to look as I want them to. Uh, but in any case, this is the door to exploration. It's what I encourage you to do. Every question you ask me, my answer is try it out. Try it out and let me know, because I'm curious. Um, and that's a good mindset, I believe, to have, to just, Try it out. Try it out. You don't know what qu what questions to ask if you don't do enough. And I'm now starting to to understand what questions I should ask myself to make this a better one next. And there will be another sheet. It's half a sheet, I believe. And I will do another version of this. And we'll see how it goes. Uh, maybe I'll do a vastly different process. We'll see how it ends up. And I'll keep you posted. Uh, and again, this is going to be kind of a serious spot, uh, painting spotlight where I am showing you a specific piece of art and some of the underlying themes, my plans, things like that, because I feel like the more I learn, the less specific advice I want to give you. And of course, when we're talking just about technique, just about the pure how to, how to mix this, how to mix that, that's fine. But for anything beyond that, I'd hate to tell you something and then have that set in your mind and cloud your own judgment and the thing that you would. And, and it takes a lot of being very careful and very protective of the artistic purity that you already have just because you are a different person than me. So you have something of your own. Uh, it takes something special to watch videos and learn from them and not just latch onto everything the other person says and forget what you have in your own mind. So I hope that makes sense. With that, we're gonna wrap it up. I do wanna thank you so, so much for your support. A lot of people bought the courses over the last weekend, so thank you so, so much. And I'm not sure if a video popped up or something like that. If you do wanna learn how to uh, paint, if you're struggling with watercolor, and especially not to talk about these large sizes, but smaller sizes, I'm showing this exact thing in the Frustration Free Watercolor course. If you wanna aim for more realism, which is a very different process from this one, by the way, uh, check out the Watercolor Realism course. You can do this. You can really do this. Trust me. I've been to places where I felt like uh, that's as good as I'm going to get. And it keeps getting better and better and better. And it, this improvement is there for you. A uh, final note, I want to thank everyone who supports me over on Patreon. Thank you so, so much. And thank you to all uh, everyone who sent me kind emails and messages. I really do appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. I will see you in the next video.